If only a few battles in history went a different way and certain events didn't happen the way that they did, we would be looking at a completely different map of the world and that's what Antebellum is trying to do. With the newest update we've got a divided Persia but a Persia that was not destroyed by the Mongols and as consequence a lot more development is placed around these areas and also because of previous events that were different from our timeline it is predominantly Zoroastrian with little sprinkles of Nestorian, Mahayana, Zunist and other religions that were around these areas prior to the uh, Muslim invasion and conquest of these lands. The old Sassanids are still around but they are struggling for power with the uh, Shaparids and the Injuids fighting against them in these lands for ultimate authority and for the right to be called the um, Prince of Persia. <laughs> Get it? Because of the video game Prince of Persia? I'm funny damn it. I'm funny. Now, if you're not familiar with Antebellum, it is an alt history mod and everything else is different in Europe and the recent update that they were kind enough to give me an early access into has changed a lot of things. Predominantly though, it has changed in the Persian lands and that's why we will be playing as the Sassanids today. If you're interested in the lore, you can find that once you just uh, start your campaign, you can see here the prelude to what happened before. The mod actually gives you the entire lore from the beginning. To sum this up essentially, after the war between the uh, Roman Empire and the Sassanids which basically collapsed both sides in our timeline the Muslims took advantage of that and they conquered parts of the Byzantine Empire and parts of the Sassanid Empire because both empires having fought each other for more than 20 years depleted their manpower depleted any sort of resource they had so the Muslims simply walked in and took everything because nobody was opposing them that's our timeline in this timeline it's considerably different I encourage you guys to go into the lore a little bit more it is very interesting and you will have a, a lot of fun reading into it if you enjoy history so to start it off we've got quite a little bit of uh development 91 development from just these provinces is great let's see if we have any cores around nothing around religion wise most nations in persia are uh, zoroastrian i believe one persian kingdom here is a uh, sunni that is right the injuids the only persian sunni right now i believe oh no i'm wrong there's actually karenids also persians and they're also sunni well they're Shia really. But I guess it's a mix of everything around. Let's check our mission tree. One of the primary focuses of this mod is this particular mission tree here and you got three options from this mission tree. You can either choose to stay Zoroastrian, go Sunni, as well as there's a third secret path, the Nestorian path. Today we're gonna go down the Zoroastrian path because that's the most fleshed out path right now and it is the one that they fully coded in. The other two paths I'm not sure if they're fully done yet so I don't want to go into super super early code. We can do that in the future maybe if you guys are interested in seeing more videos for Antebellum. There's a completely new unit tech now for this region. The Iranian unit tech and we have Iranian foot soldiers followed by Kamandaran archers, Nezri Daran units and so on. It's actually quite nicely done and the units seem pretty powerful. I mean for tech 12, two offensive fire, one defensive. That's really good actually. Same goes for the uh, cavalry because we have infantry influences from the Mongol cavalry we start with significantly stronger cavalry than most countries and they get even stronger but they lose out compared to the east and the uh, Muslim tech as you go along in uh, years. The Persian group here includes the Afghans, the Sogdians, the Khorasmians and Azari plus some other nations that we also have in our game. Oh Alan is also a part of uh, Iranians. Okay interesting. Alania exists. Very interesting indeed. As well as Kumania exists here. Wait a second can Rob is in this game? As a Romanian, this is probably one of my favorite tags, just saying. Because it is a Zunus tag, no no other reason. Kind of makes me wonder, you know, the Bamian statues here were Buddhist statues because a very long time ago, Afghanistan, well, the Afghanistan area was a Buddhist predominantly. It had a lot of changes from a religious perspective. It's good to see that in this mod, there's still Mahayana Buddhists and some Zunists in this area. What would our history be like if we actually still had uh, Buddhists in Afghanistan, Nestorians in the Asian parts of the world and so on. Reminds me of that movie, The uh, Butterfly Effect. There's quite a few new monuments also like the Fortress of Merv that offers military advisor cost reduction, national garrison growth, and attrition for enemies. Wow, that is really good. Sadly, it does not increase the um, maximum attrition, so it's going to be capped at 5 still, unless the mod 
change that somehow. Would be nice to see this increase the maximum attrition also. We also have the Tomb of Saint Timur the Lame. Wait a second. Is this like an actual tomb? Do they have the Tomb of Saint T- Wait, wait, hold up. Saint Timur the Lame? Oh, because they're Nestorians. <laughs> This is part of the alternate history path right here. Cost of enforcing religion and opinion of heretics. Wow, that's something no one's gonna ever upgrade. <laughs> the ceremonial capital of Parsa gives monthly splendor and province governing cost in the own province only. Maideni Nashjahan. No clue what this is about. Wait, is this in the base game? I'm not even sure. Prison of Oblivion. What? Rebel suppression efficiency, harsh treatment, and absolutism. Holy schnapps. We just found Guantanamo Bay in the old world, didn't we? There's a lot of new monuments actually added in this mod, and I have to say that the images for these monuments are so well done that I would personally think it was done by PDX. The quality of the mod is absolutely insane. Alright, let's start this off a little bit by getting an army larger than 20,000, 100% force limit, and manpower at 100. You get until the end of the game, core creation cost minus 10%! Looks like one of the early missions is to capture the Gulf Coast. That's gonna give us ships and stuff. So Prince of Persia we gotta own these areas. Okay, that's a weird. Oh, okay, I see. Let's let's try and form Persia. Let's make that our goal, shall we? In order to form Persia, we need these particular cities. Not really that difficult. It is gonna be a few wars though, so let's go for that. Let's uh, also check out what we can get here. It looks like this is the default aspects for Zoroastrian. Nothing changed in the mod for these particular things. We're gonna go for the goods produced, and we cannot get a second holy site because none of the other holy sites are controlled by Zoroastrian. Okay, well, we're gonna. To fix that. I like to see that the Caspian Sea is actually navigable. So you got ships over here that you can use to transport troops if you want over to No Guy's Lands, for example. Clearly, I made my uh, three biggest neighbors my three initial rivals. And estates wise, literally a standard estate like in base U4. No difference here. Wait, what? We got siege ability advisors. Oh, that is so cool, man. I like seeing new advisors in the mod. Aggressive expansion impact. Oh my lord, we need this in the base U4. Can we please have this? in the base EU4 PDX. I would love it. Let's turn our general into a general. And by our general, I mean our leader. Did I just say turn our general into a general? This guy, bro, I'm telling you, he just... My brain works in mysterious ways. And I just noticed they got a really cool map sprite. Holy shit, they look like immortals from the 300. Let's get some Marconaries too. We need the Marconaries. We're gonna ally the Jaiirids. I wish the Jaiirids were still in the base EU4. You know, they used to actually be in the game before. I don't know why they got removed. Wait, what? I can do this mission? Oh, it's one of the following. I don't need all of those. Right. So now I got core creation costs until the end of the game. Oh, that is so cool. Mongol tactics. We need army tradition, cav, and military advisor. All right, that's fine. We got the special unify Persia CB, which lets us uh, attack any Persian nation. Let's go with these guys first. Uh, we also got an alliance with the Jaiirids, but I'm trying to get this land before the Jaiirids does. And because they also don't have any allies, it is the easiest of all targets around here. Really enjoyed to see the scripted events. Like, Byzantium just had a scripted event in which Morea broke away and became an independent country. So now they've got a war with the Byzantines. There's tons of stuff like that around this mod. Which really makes it seem like it has a lot more life, you know. It makes it a more flavorful mod, let's say, than most mods out there. Frankie's succession also happened. Oh boy. Losing Paris to the rebels will abdicate Lothair III. And I think that's gonna actually form France. Or no, actually they get a choice to form France before that don't they what would the world even look like if the mighty persian empire of old did not collapse to the muslim invaders would they be like this would they be more centralized what do you guys think i'm curious let me know in the comments what you think about this scenario that we have here in the war against uh, my son i'm calling in the jayarids because i know that the jayarids are going to be happy to take some uh, nineveh land and i'm happy to give it to them i guess trying to take all of these for myself though i don't want them to start sieging this down hey if it destroys army very Nice. Oh, you bastards. They're actually gonna get to Susa before me, aren't they? Let's see. We got 23rd of August. They got 14. Yeah, I'm not even gonna bother. Let him siege it. This should be an easy battle because we're fighting them in the mountains and we're fighting them defensively since we have a fortification in here. What the snaps just happened here? Sharupids attacked what now? Oh, I'm not gonna let this go, boys. I'm not gonna let this go. We're gonna fight against the Sharupids and we're gonna try and get a white piece with them. I don't want to take anything from them just yet. Let's try and peace out these guys first in uh, Nineveh. Hopefully we get this fort uh, to fold 
fall soon as well since it's 49. Of course it did not fall at 49, why would it, right? And let's also stack and vapenic on these boyos. Arrivederci, Nineveh. Oh, we started sieging, so we should be able to get a white piece. Beautiful. Now this army can focus on Sharapids. Aba unzi, arrivederci, my son. It was nice knowing you. I also like the meme of this nation here, the Sarukanids, which has a hand of Sauron as their flag. It's an obvious reference to, you know, Saruman from the Lord of the Rings. Kind of like the same nation as in the base you for the one that starts over here. Ah, very nice. Let's split these boys up. Can we actually do the peace deal now? I want them to cancel the alliance they got with uh, this nation because I want to attack them afterwards and I don't want to have to fight these boys as well. All right, second time's a charm. Let's see if they're going to agree to it now. They are actually, we can even get some money. 192 ducats. Hails to the Yama boys. This way we get uh, to fix our economy a little bit too. Let's go back now and we're going to attack both of these guys at the same time since these are both Persian nations and as consequence we need the capital of each of these nations in order to form Persia. I'm also going to get more mercenaries. Let's say the Kurdish company sounds like the right one for me right now. Be gone you heathen scumbags. Don't want to see you bastards around my lands, okay? Luckily the Tabaristan company is still around. The Kurdish boys, they got stack wiped instantly almost because I recruited them next to the enemy territory. Remind me never to do that ever again. <laughs> one thing that I have to say is massive pain in this area is the fact that every single fortification is in a mountain province. Like, come on, really Persia? That's why it's always good to check if your mercenaries have uh, siege pips. Because of our mercs getting the siege pips in their general, it really helped out with the siege process so much. Which means that we now can fully annex these boyos. We're gonna annex everything from the war target, otherwise we'd be paying extra diplo points, which we don't wanna. What's the point of paying diplo points extra when we don't need to, right? Ah, uh, so much beautiful now. Sassanids back in control, taking care of those scumbag rebellious nations, right? I am gonna concentrate simply because I uh, don't have enough admin points to core everything without uh, concentrating, so yeah, not much of a choice there. <laughs> I'm still missing out on the admin points to core up the uh, capital here, Tamisha. This is the most five head move ever. Merv over here just gave away Kondoteri to Turkestan, which means their entire army is not theirs. For the time being, it belongs to Turkestan, right? So I'm fighting zero units, literally just got a carpet siege their nation, and that's pretty much it. One more towards the unification of uh, Iran or Persia. Actually, would it even be Iran or Persia? I guess it would be Sassanid, right? What did the pa Sassanids call themselves, really? I feel like after this, we gotta chill for a while because our economy is, uh, you know, we're taking a lot of loans. We gotta not take so many loans and fix it. The first step would obviously be to lower the autonomy everywhere, which we have not done yet. We are starting to get a coalition. It's only Gurgan and Shuripan, so it's not that big of a deal, though. Shuripan's probably gonna be my next target. Oh, la renaissance. Would be cool if uh, the uh, institutions would be different in this mod as well. So, like, instead of renaissance, if we got something, I don't know, more antebellum-ish. We do have nationalism towards the end, though, so there's that going for us. And it's time for the favorite part of any single campaign. Lowering the autonomy. Why give them rights? Why let them talk when you can just make them shut up and listen to what you say? Am I right, autocratic leaders in the chat? Eh? <laughs> I know you there. I know you are. Check it out. By lowering the autonomy, we managed to get 24 land force limit now. So we can recruit even more units without having to pay extra for them. And it increased our economy so that now we only are at minus 3 ducats per month. Which is not so bad. So after we actually delete some of these fortifications, we're gonna pay a lot less. In fact, let me delete this one in the grasslands. I don't need that fort. For that matter, I don't need the one in Elam right now. Arilat War of Reunification. What the hell is an Arilat? Uh... Okay, looks like a massive Provence style kingdom over here in the south of France. Jean Carolingian. Oh, oh, okay. These guys are direct descendants from the Carolingians. I see what's going on here. Not gonna lie, this is one of the most cursed European maps I've seen in a really long time. And I have to say, I'm loving it. And it's time for the big war against Sharipur. I think they have two provinces that we need in order to form Persia. So I'm going to be uh, extra aggressive against these boys here. And of course, the best time for these rebels to appear, isn't it? Oh, that's so cool. We got a new reform. Placate the Great Houses. Military free policies, not necessary right now. This is a great reform for the 1600s, not as a tier 2 reform. So we're going to go for the army tradition and professionalism, which is a lot more needed at the moment. This 
This is a little bit of a dilemma. I want to switch over to the new units, but I'm sieging this down. I think I'm going to wait until I finish the war. Otherwise, I might get my units stack wiped if I'm not careful. A great battle is happening at the gate of the Shapurid capital. That's like the best Persian accent you've ever heard in any E4 video. I know, I know. I'm 0.2% uh, Persian. Not even kidding. It's in my DNA test, actually. <laughs> oh, oh, we're stack wiping. Oh, my lord. Can we get a hallelujah for the entire entirety of the Shaparid army over here, defeated and crushed by 743 Sassanids. <laughs> it's so weird when you see 700 units killing 12,000. Oh, I see what's going on. So we literally just need uh, three cities left in order to form Persia. And I'm getting Kondotieri for free? What? No. And this is from the guys I'm going to attack next. Finally, we got the capital. Now we can do a proper peace deal. Can we get one ducat or 19 ducats? Oh, I love it. Look how beautiful this is, guys. It's not even many nations in a coalition. It's literally just Sharapids, Gorgon, and Zikids, which essentially are the uh, Persian nations left around here. Surprise, Injuids are not in it. Are they not Persian? They are. Oh, it's because they're not Zoroastrian. Yes, I remember. These guys are the uh, the Sunni Persians, aren't they? Yes, sir. Way better looking Sassanids, isn't it? We were so close to getting over our overextension, and we have admin efficiency issues because of over-governing capacity. Oh, schnapps. Let me fix that. I'm gonna quickly give this out. Boom. Chakalaka. And also seize Crownlands, even though we're gonna have to fight some rebels not that big of a deal these mercenary companies are completely spent no more manpower pool so i'm gonna be replacing them right after i lower autonomy again with uh, some proper mercenary companies i'm gonna go for the grand company we need some money from that so let's actually get the burger loans once more now we're getting significantly bigger loans 184 ducats because we've grown in size obviously and our land force limit is at 30 now it's gonna be even more after we finish coring all of this and lowering the autonomy. Let's go ahead and get the Grand Company in uh, Shapurapa. I wish we had a unified Persia war goal in the base game. It would be pretty cool to see as a jam, let's say, uh, use it against everybody around. But then again, a jam's in a pretty good spot though. And uh, Timurids are usually easy to destroy after they uh, get their vassals disloyal. So that means after Shakurur dies, which should be fairly early because he's like, what, 70 something when he starts? 69? Oh, they're trying to go around me. That's so cute. What are you gonna siege down injures what are you gonna siege down i'm curious to see i'm gonna siege your capital whilst you figure that out you little schnitzeldorf oh no jerusalem fell to the nizarids oh what will the world be now nothing's gonna change <laughs> All them crusader boos in the chat be like, No, Ludi, my life is ruined without Jerusalem. I cannot continue. Not sure why they have a uh, slightly Asian accent, these crusaders, but there's there's got to be a reason for that. Also love how uh, the rebel army has more units than the actual country has. So my problem now is that I'm still at war with Hormuz. I got no fleet and no way of getting to them because nobody here wants to give me military access. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do a second war against Injuids, I guess. Because right now, cannot fully annex. I gotta let them keep one province, which I'm not sad about. It's fine, it's just one province. We can take that other province later on. At least now we got everything we need in order to form Persia, boys. Finish coring this up, so let's form the Persian Empire. Gain new traditions and ambitions. So now we got the Sassanid traditions and ambitions. Let's get the Persian ones, which are the same like in vanilla. No, they're not. Immortal. Drill gain modifier. Oh, schnapps. Are we getting immortal units? No freaking way. I mean, I'm not seeing any immortal units over here, so I'm guessing I gotta unlock these. Oh, dude, no freaking way. <laughs> Uh, so we have an assimilation system similar to that of the Mughals in the base game where having Iranian, for example, gives advisor cost minus 10% reduction. And I'm guessing it's the same for all the other culture groups that we assimilate, essentially. Let's check our government reform. The Persian Empire, assimilate cultures into administration, governing capacity, and legitimacy. Cool. Where's my immortals at, bro? Oh, there you go. Bolster the immortal ranks. Plus five immortal force limit. But apparently I have to revive 
revive the immortals. Where is that mission? Oh, it's here. So in order to revive the immortals, I need to have 75% army professionalism. Holy snaps. And that gives me 5% discipline, morale damage, and so on for the immortals, as well as allows me to recruit them. We also can get Persian war elephants till the end of the game, calf shock, and calf cost and infantry to calf ratio plus 25 and minus 25. That is insane. I just realized I really messed up. So uh, in order for me to get permanent claims on the entirety of Persia, all I had to do was get two allies in Persia or Khorasan and two rivals or enemies in Khorasan or Persia. That would have been easy to do from the start, actually. <laughs> I probably wasted like 400 admin points on extra coring up. I feel like the biggest Pepega in the chat right now. Holy snaps, Shaparids just got crushed by Sind. Well, you know what that means. It's time to Sind. <laughs> Get it? Time to sin, but we add the D at the, e the end. A little bit later than we should have had this mission done, but we now got the princes of Persia. As such, we also have a house divided, giving us territorial cores on all of Persia, Khorasan, Luri, Mazandran. Holy mother of God, I really played this badly, didn't I? <laughs> I would have gotten cores on all of this? Bro, I'm still on admin four. <laughs> Three, four texts behind an admin because of Cory. <laughs> and we can do execution of the Ilkhans. The last Ilkhan will be executed, giving us until the death of our leader. Diplo rep and unjustified demands. Interesting. As well as claims around that area. Beautiful. I'm also a massive fan of how the mod actually adds a roads. There's a proper road system implemented, which offers dev cost reduction, trade power, friendly movement speed, and other bonuses. And it scales up the better the road is. Eventually, you can go up to railroads which offers some serious bonuses but this is for the late game obviously some of your later missions also revolve around these buildings like having a proper road system built you can enact one of these missions and so on mountain expansion is gonna let you get the mountain expansion privilege which is similar to the one that the Norwegians have in vanilla which makes sense because you know the Persians are basically a mountain people in the Middle East right I have to say the amount of flavor that this nation has is quite significant and I had a lot of fun playing it so you guys should definitely check out Ambinar. I don't know when this uh, new update is going to come out but check the link in description and you'll find out for yourself and until the next time check this amazing Ottoman run out and I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers I would not be able to do this without all your support 